friends community and the concessionaire community to craft a constituency building or public awareness building campaign throughout the country. One of the major barriers um, for people uh, from all diverse communities throughout the country and coming to the parks is their lack of awareness of the parks. We need a campaign, an initiative, um, whether it's more PR, marketing, but it's an awareness building effort that all of us can be a part of. We think that needs to be added to this overarching call to action. Secondly, the Second Century Commission called for a presidential commission of notable Americans uh, in, the, in the spirit, if you will, of the Statue of Liberty a number of years ago in Lee Iacocca. At the right time, in the right way, we see that kind of leadership um, being very important to our efforts leading up to the centennial. Great. Um, one of the things I found interesting when the call to action came out um, in looking at the 36 items that the foundation had been doing things around basically 13 of those items already. So I, I found that encouraging. And as I look at the work of the foundation, I, I find many of our programs um, fall into several buckets. And so um, when you look on the, and we tend to follow more themes, uh, you know, in, in the case of connecting the parts to people. Um, you know, heritage. We, we've had great success with our African American Experience Fund for the past 10 years. Um, currently, that fund supports educational and volunteer efforts in only over 25 units of the national parks. Learning with that, and you know, the big thing we talk about youth engagement, especially minority youth, is we have a very growing Latino population in the United States. There's 50 million Latinos in the U.S. today. 25% of today's youth is Latino and growing. And so, um, you know, working with, with the secretary and with the director, we've created the American Latino Heritage Fund. And we really want to improve both our outreach to the Latino community, but also ensure that uh, American Latino history is thoughtfully and accurately told within our national parks. Another area that we've had great success is putting out grant dollars and really putting it to park partners and park staff to create programs, engagement programs, that they best serve their park and for best ways for them to reach out to their um, constituents, particularly the gateway communities, um, underserved audiences, the unaware audiences, and bringing them into the parks. So we're going to continue with our America's Best Idea Grant Program, and we're, we're really hoping to grow that program. And you know, when you look at like the, uh, AEF, or you look at the American Latino Fund, or these ADI grant programs, these aren't meant to be exclusive programs of the foundation. I know there's many ways that we can be partnering with you in the room um, within alignment of those programs. Um, the other way is, you know, Tom spoke a little bit, you know, and Derek both about increasing, you know, exposure and awareness to, to the national parks and, and innovation. You know, we're going to continue to explore ways to get the park message out and get it out efficiently. You know, most recently we did a worldwide day to play partnership with Nickelodeon, the number one children's channel in the U.S. And um, we got it with the message where their get outside and play message, get, out and say, get outside and play and visit a national park. We're able to have PSAs created over the course of the past summer. They're aired throughout the summer. Uh, had about two and a half million dollars worth of advertising um, act, um, uh, value. And then on Public Lands Day, we had 50,000 people, about 35,000 youth, down on the ellipse um, in President's Park. We're looking to extend that program. You know, partnerships where we can work with other outlets that have the audience and have the megaphone to help, you know, uh, connect parks to their constituencies we find very important and continue to pursue those. And then, you know, Active Trails program. Uh, many parks have trails forever. We have a program called Active Trails. I think there's a big opportunity first and for foremost to maybe create brand alignment. You know, we're not married to the Active Trails term. And, uh, but we are uh, married very much believing, as others do, to what the effects are getting people out to do trail construction, restoration, and maintenance projects. You know, it's Paul part of that healthy parks, healthy people theme, you know, creating activity and ownership within the parks. Uh, we're going to continue to fund that program and, again, you know, look to partner uh, with those of you in the room, room on that. Do you want to start the education? Sure. Um, all right, so I get to keep going. Um, Education. I, I know we're all big fans of education. The foundation we are. Um, we've had a number of initiatives over the years. And as we look forward, um, the Teacher Ranger Teacher Program of the National Park Service. Uh, we're merging our similar program into Teacher Ranger Teacher. Um, it's hugely impactful. And, you know, and when dollars are finite, to take the opportunity, obviously we'd like to get every child we could into a national park. 
Um, those are one-on-one -on -one exper investment experiences. When we have the opportunity to get teachers into the park, one teacher could touch 100 students over the course of a year. And the fact that we get teachers in the park over the summer learning about a particular park and the system itself and going back to their classroom and, and creating curriculum and lessons of what they learned over the summer and being able to be in uniform and uh, give those lessons and then bring their kids back to the park, we see is hugely impactful. We're all very sensitive to climate change and it's an important issue. Um, the national parks are both being impacted by it, but they're probably one of the best showcases in the world on the effects of climate change. Uh, we're partnering with four national park institutes and with the goal, again, bringing teachers into the parks over the summer to provide them with curriculum and teaching them about the, the direct effects of climate change so that they can take that back to their classrooms and teach it with national parks as the backdrop for a great educational session. Um, transportation funding. Everybody in this room has done various things on bringing people to the parks. It's hugely important, and, and we commend you on that. The call to action has laid out the challenge to get 100,000 kids into the park. Um, we see that as a great starting point, and, um, and, and we wholeheartedly endorse that. Uh, we, we are creating, have created a specific transportation fund where we can partner with park partners and the parks themselves on subsidizing transportation into the parks for field trips. Along the transportation theme, another program we've had for over 10 years is our transportation scholars. Uh, this is where we've placed graduate students in transportation um, um, uh, expertise into the national parks. Um, to look at their individual transportation issue, particularly in plant somebody in park for a year. There can be issues around congestion, there can be issues around pollution, um, and working to solve those problems. Uh, to date, this, this program has positively impacted over 50 parks. Uh, several parks have had uh, transportation scholars over a succession of years. Uh, we're going to continue that program. Uh, we want to expand that program both also into um, environmental and recreational scholars. You know, the idea of getting this expertise in the park and, you know, to help, you know, tackle these issues and then use these as learning moments not only to solve the problem but to use it as a teaching moment, uh, we see as um, very important uh, opportunities. Um, and then uh, another area is, you know, we're in, a, we're in this confluence of old media and new media. Where, you know, where how do we reach the audiences out there? You know, we've got kids that are glued to devices. There's some people that say get rid of the devices and they'll get into the park. Well, the reality is the devices aren't going away. Derek's talked about getting Wi-Fi into the parks, and that's extremely important. But we also, we're in, we're in an age where realistically to get people connected with their parks, we've got to take the parks to them first. Um, and so um, we're looking to do a lot of research in this area, put a lot of time into it. We've engaged Rich Cronin. Richard, would you stand up, please? It's in Midwest, right there. I hope everybody has the opportunity to talk to Rich today, if not some other time. But Rich was the first president of TV Land. He's the former president of the Fox Family Channel. And he's going to really help us, the Park Service, and all of you. We invite you to be part of the conversation to see to take old media and new media, how we can merge that, how we can leverage that effectively to use it to get this park message out, both as to, in a way to educate, to entertain people, to motivate people, um, to not only come and visit the parks, but to you know advocate and care for the parks as well. Very quickly, all six of these action steps in the education arena are hugely important. And I'd love to take an hour to, to just articulate everything that concessioners are doing. I'll, I'll just cite one example. At Lake Mead, Forever Earth, the houseboat, not only takes kids out, but is a continuous connection between kids in the Las Vegas area and Lake Mead through a webcam and remote telemetry and things like that. That's the kind of thing we do. It's not just a one-time exposure of kids. It's getting them to understand how parks are directly connected with their lives. Thank you both. Briefly, on the number 18, Ticket to Ride Transportation, both of you spoke to transportation. Wholly support and agree with that emphasis. And from NPCA's kind of our strategic workup on Capitol Hill, we've augmented your two work in that area um, by constantly working on the transportation bill and think that that's a certainly important source of revenue dollars for the parks going forward. Um, I want to broadly uh, or briefly mention the broad issue of funding in this category. I mentioned earlier the five to six hundred million annual funding shortfall. If the parks take a hit 
from the super committee or whatever, we're looking at a 5%, 8%, 10% cut in the Park Service budget, we've got massive issues. So we, as the parks community, need to figure out our collective campaign and strategy and messaging to deal with federal appropriations to parks. Yes, there are strategies for augmenting that, but if we're taking a 5-10% cut, there are major issues and challenges leading up to the centennial. Um, moving on to preserve, uh, preserving America's special places, many of these uh, action steps NPCA supports, whether it's number 21, uh, we're visiting the Leopold and, and we want to work on. Number 22, scaling up. I think those um, corridors are great. We're, we, we want to focus on, yes, those five plus some and want to be sure that some of the tools we're looking at are not just voluntary partnerships. There's some other strategies, park expansions, formal agreements, executive and secretary orders, technical assistance, other things that could or should be part of that strategy. Um, number 26, back home on the range, obviously support the bison. Um, there obviously also, though, are many other species that need to be reintroduced or uh, enhanced, whether it's grizzlies in North Cascades, uh, desert tortoise in California, desert parks, the native fish in Yellowstone, jaguars in Big Bend, and the list goes on. Other species that need similar attention. Um, number 29, posterity partners, that's dealing with the endowment. Um, that is more of a friends community lead, Neil, and the, the friends groups, NPCA is very interested in playing the role that we can, presuming there's going to need to be legislation on that front of, of supporting that. We do think there are a fair number of additional action items, action steps to build on this um, on marine parks. Um, obviously, um, that uh, ecosystem broadly defined needs to be needs to have greater representation in the park system, especially coral reef areas. So cross-border landscapes, there's been some good progress um, up in Crown of the Continent, down in Big Bend, but we want more there. Um, air quality. Air quality in our national parks is far from what it should be. Um, we need a dimension of this call to action that is improving, uh, continuing to improve the air quality in our national parks, a major issue and challenge there. Cultural resources. There are some action steps that address cultural resources, but our recent state of America's national parks showed that the cultural resources are in profound need of additional attention and funding. And lastly, um, support the uh, water action step here. Parks play a key role in many of the great waters throughout this country, whether it's uh, Chesapeake Bay or up at Great Lakes, Everglades, et cetera. Um, and we see the need for a broader action step there. Great. The uh, concessioners applaud and thank NPCA and the Park Service for their lead on, on the uh, uh, preservation of special places. We're particularly interested in several of these action steps, 23, 24, 25, and we see some of these integrated. Um, first of all, in, in park after park, whether it's in use of solar power, whether it's use of hybrids in, in Yosemite, there are uh, cutting edge examples of what concessioners are doing and frankly we want to continue to do that and to share the expertise. Uh, and investing wisely, a tremendously important thing, uh, we all understand that it's going to be hard to get appropriated dollars or any other kinds of dollars. The more we spend this money effectively and efficiently, the better off we'll be. And the skill set that concessioners have uh, can be demonstrated to, to be of use in park use of construction and other kinds of funding, and we'll be happy to elaborate on that at some other time. And, and finally, I think as we look at um, other kinds of things, uh, there are provisions in the tax code, such as the historic tax credits and solar energy credits and other kinds of things, that we should think long and hard about how to apply those so that we can, in fact, uh, bring new resources, financial resources, to the table uh, and extend and leverage the available appropriated funding. Uh, one last po comment on posterity partners. Uh, we're intrigued with the endowment. We're intrigued with the, the aggregation model of that. So it wouldn't necessarily be one big fund. It could be site-specific funds that aggregate into that billion dollars. And we certainly think that the guest donation program can play a role in that. Uh, guests today are asked to make a dollar per night contribution in many park service lodging uh, facilities. Maybe we should be asking them as well whether they would like to be connected to a local friends organization or NPF to find out how they can do even